Hiya, hiya. It's uh, Joey Reynolds with my series. No, I'm not on Sirius. That's a that's an FM station. No, is that FM, Sirius, XM, FM? I don't know, whatever the hell it is. You pay for it. You know, you pay for everything anymore. Everything has a price tag. I got all my stuff in storage. It's like uh, uh, feeding oats to a dead horse. And, and everything else that happens with this, with this uh, society right now, going to the beach even, well, now, now we can't gather, but, you know, uh, you pay for everything. Everything has a price tag. Even in New York, they got what they call the congestion tax. There hasn't been a car there. There's tumbleweed up and down Fifth Avenue because there's no parade this year. There's no stores for Christmas. And New York is deader than my nuts. And yet they are wanting to charge for the congestion for the amount of cars that come into the middle of the city because actually they need the money to keep their games going, but they're not honest enough to tell you that. They tell you that that it's, it's the congestion. It's the amount of traffic that needs to be uh, charged because we will then have an easier ride. <laughs> After they have put in a bike lane, a bus lane, a delivery lane is not needed because uh, that's the one that we all use. <laughs> The lowest lane, I told you that before. Hey, listen, you know, the trouble with, uh, with what's happening now is everybody's mad at everybody, and we're all trying to do something to someone that we shouldn't do, and, and nobody's held accountable. You know, the vote counting with the president, that one we know, and uh, how about the dancing with the stars? They, they thought they got a bad shot last night. They were, they were bitching about something. Taylor Swift with her $300 million catalog. Can you imagine I gotta feel sorry for someone with $300 million? I, you know, that would be actually a stretch for me. I have a hard time fathoming someone with, uh, with $300 million and feeling bad for them. I, <laughs> I can't. I mean, we're sitting here waiting for a check uh, from government for relief and, and social security and retirement and I'm going to feel sorry for this little twerp that sings songs out of Nashville get the hell out of here <laughs> are you crazy and then all the in, the uh, infusion or is it confusion uh, where they're putting black people in you know the, the they when I say they I don't know who they are that's the, that's the problem the, the they is never announced we don't know who they are who are they <laughs> We know that the election is not by our votes, it's by the college of uh, people who belong to the electoral board. Uh, we know that, that uh, who they are, okay, who are they? <laughs> the Port Authority in New York, what, what is that? That's New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. They decide how much the tolls are going to be and what you're going to do with, your, uh, with, with paying for parking and everything. I mean, there, there is these secret societies if we really voted directly, we could wipe up a lot of this. All we'd have to do is allow voting on the phone, put an issue on the air and say, okay, here's what's up for vote. Now, everybody go to the phone and vote. But, you know, that would be a little bit too simple because that would give us a democracy. God forbid we put some people out of work, like the criminals that are running the government right now. And I'm not saying that about everybody. I'm talking about uh, Mayor Giuliani, who sold out on the Italians to clean up the crime in New York. Yeah, he turned in his own kind. <laughs> we would actually, he's lucky he walks the way he did that. <laughs> this is a, a society of dunces. Do you know that? Because we uh, we're powerless, and we act like we got something in a vote. You do. You have one thing in a vote. You got your vote. <laughs> That's what you got. <laughs> That's nice. I mean, it's just an interesting concept. <laughs> Maybe one day they'll perfect it and it'll actually work where you vote for somebody and they get into office. Jesus, God, I, I wonder if that'll ever happen. But, you know, nobody wants to talk about things this way because then you're ruining everybody's income or their game or their shame, something that they're hiding. Like I mentioned earlier, the inclusion. You've got a, a black woman who now is uh, uh, vice president, fine. And then you got another woman who's in the, uh, the Navy. She talked today. Uh, about uh, she's a naval officer, some a commander now, I guess some woman, black woman, first one, you know, they say, a manager of a baseball team, first one. So as in, every time somebody black or a woman gets something, they make much ado about it. And all of this actually should be much ado about nothing because we should be treating people fairly no matter who they are. And this is not how you do it. You don't do it by giving everybody positions, but then too, maybe that's how you become they. I wanna be they. They did this, they did that. <laughs> how do I get to be they? <laughs> oh man, they or
or thou. <laughs> That's it. Think about this, and then, uh, you know, when you figure it out, call me back, because I don't take calls. Uh, uh, and and I, I just, uh, when I say call me back, I mean, I don't want to see your text. I don't want to, as a matter of fact, leave me alone. We, <laughs> it's a rental trap.